Uh, it kind of all started at parole December 31st, 2001. I, uh, I didn't know where I was going to go or what I was going to do. And uh, I got a chance that a lot of these guys don't ever get. And, uh, and my mom gave me one last chance. And uh, I never looked back, you know. I, I spent my whole life in trouble. I spent my whole life on drugs. And, uh, and I was sitting in the hole one time and uh, actually March 22nd, 2001, waiting to get my first shower. And uh, the ordeal I had to go through just to get a shower changed my life. I realized that uh, not only was I in prison behind decisions that I made, but I was in the worst part of the prison behind decisions that I made. And from that day on, I decided to do something different. I didn't know what it was going to be. I didn't know where I was going to go or how I was going to do it. I wasn't allowed home. hadn't been allowed home mostly from, since I was 15 years old. Uh, at 17 years old, really. Uh, I, I just... Uh, I just knew that I didn't want to sit in that cell again. So, uh, so I got out, and my mother flipped her life upside down for me, and uh, and and the rest is history, so to speak. So, I, so when I got out, I started staying clean, and uh, I went to some twelve-step stuff, and uh, I made myself a part of that, and. Uh, Really good thing. And my mom happen wanted to buy a couple houses, and uh, she said, "I'm going to buy a house in Placer County, uh, so your brother has a place to come home from prison to, and I'm going to buy a house in Sacramento County, and I want you to rent the rooms to people trying to get clean." So that's what I did. Um, a couple years. Uh, just about the time I was about to get off parole, I got married. Um, and, and my brother had gotten out of prison and got a really good job and, uh, and decided that, uh, decided that he wanted to buy a house and uh, maybe get these guys out of my own house that I'm living in. So, uh, so we did. We didn't know how we were gonna do it. We didn't know what it took to do it. Um, matter of fact, there's a certain way you have to do it in uh, Sacramento County, and uh, and we tried to do it like that. And uh, my brother couldn't do too much of it because he was still on parole. You can't really uh, you can't really help parolees while on parole in a business sense. So uh, the deal with him was is that he would buy a house and. Uh, and I would pay the mortgage and pay the bills and and take care of the whole day-to-day -day operation and uh, and that was in 2004. I had just gotten off parole. I never did anything but rob and steal my whole life. I didn't know how to do any of this stuff and when I tried to contact these uh, certification people that are in this county uh, I could never get a return call, so I called the state, found out what I needed to do, and I made it happen. Uh, I made some flyers, and I went back to my parole agent, and I said, uh, "Hey, I'm opening up for sober living. Can you help me out? Give these to your uh, the rest of the parole agents." And uh, and she said, "Absolutely." So that was 2004, I believe, and the rest is history. It started out started out hard. There's a lot of competition that seems like anybody that gets clean wants to wants to open up a business of the same sort and uh, so so it's been a struggle in the beginning, you know. How do I make it happen? How do I do this? What can I do? What can I do? Uh, not a whole bunch of laws on what you can do, what you can't do. Um, so I, I started rolling with eight months clean. Of course, I used drugs when I was in prison until that March 22nd, 2001, when I decided to do something different. And uh, and when I got out, I had a lot of fear. Of course, I didn't act like it. I ran around with my chest out. I still only hung out with white people. Uh, I, I did all that stuff that we used to do on the yard, thinking 
that that's how it really was. I went to this convention and heard this guy speak and he was a Muslim. And what he said was, if you fucking let me chase you out of here, you better turn around and look what fucking chased you in here. And uh, and uh, changed my life that day. I, I realized that day that, uh, that I'm not on the yard anymore, that I'm really not a racist, that I don't have to play prison politics out here in the real world. Uh, that's not how life is. Not for me anyway. Um, although that dude a lot of... Uh, a lot of debt for helping me with that, you know, and because when he first came out, I didn't want to hear anything he had to say when he had a Muslim beanie on, and that's that stuff that was taught to me in the system, in the streets. That's not that stuff I grew up with, because uh, that's just not how I roll. Um, so uh, in Sacramento, uh, the SLEs are clicky and all the old ones that did all the work in the beginning they keep a lock on stuff you know and uh, and I get it. It, it 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 makes great business sense and, and in the beginning I didn't get it uh, in the beginning I still wanted to uh, to do something about it physically you know I used to get mad man I called this place nine times and never could get anybody to call me back then I met this dude named Rick and uh, what happened was, is, is he ended up marrying my cousin. And, uh, and he'd already done everything, just in a different county. And he had already had corporations and had certifications and, and all the stuff that I could not get done here. And, uh, and he did me a pretty good favor, man. He said, come join me. and. Uh, and you can benefit everything I've done in the last 10 years. And, uh, and that's what I did. So, uh, he's one of them guys that, that, uh, that, that made stuff happen that I couldn't figure out a way to make happen. I think he had way more business sense than I ever thought about having it. And I still, I still don't have it. Uh, I, I still, and I'm going to tell you the honest God truth, this place I've got has never made money, ever, ever. And uh, without a wife that I got, uh, that pays the bills here, because she knows how much helping these other dudes uh, helps me, uh, I'd be in big trouble. I'm a terrible businessman. What I am good at is helping dudes that come out of prison, period. That's what I'm at. That's what I do. So Rick called me for a meeting. I went and met with him and, and he said, uh, we want to start this program for lifers. And, and pretty much Placer County has told us that if we bring one of these guys here, they'll find a reason to deny him and they'll have to go somewhere else. So he said, from what I, he understood is that Sacramento County had an open county and that it, do I want to take them all? I said, absolutely. Uh, I've been on prison yards with lifers. I played peanut with lifers. Uh, to be honest with you, I never thought one would ever get out. I mean, I never known a lifer to get out ever. You know, they sentenced them to an indeterminate sentence, and uh, and, and they made it stick. You know, seven to life dudes been down 35, 40 years. You know, and so I never thought anyone would get out. And um, and I said, yeah, you know, I'll do it. I got a big, big play. Actually, at the time, I had three places. My brother had bought two more houses, and uh, it was a struggle. I, I mean, can you imagine having 60 beds and no funding? Uh, I run a tight program. I absolutely have no drama, no bullshit. If I do, they're gone, uh, but I can't get respected in Sacramento County, and that's exactly why I joined Rick. But uh, we couldn't keep the three houses running, so uh, I backed back down to one house. We lost two, you know. Uh, you know, you, don't, you buy houses in, when, you know, in the boom, and then the economy takes a dump when you're trying to do something in a business move and, 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 and shit happens. And, and you want to know the truth is I smiled all the way through that shit. Uh, because my life's good because I help these dudes, you know. I get to see these dudes come out and change. And uh, yeah, that's why I do what I do. So April 2010, 
uh, what happened is the first lifer showed up and he came to me and he uh, he had a look in his eyes like I've never seen before and he said I've been down 29 years eight months I went into the counselor's office on April 1st and the counselor well here, here's what happened he's he said uh, they called me to the counselor's office on April 1st. And so I thought, oh man, you know, I mean, what did I do? Or, you know, it's the normal stuff. You, when the cops call you to the office, you worry. So he goes in there and uh, they tell him to sit down and they slide him a piece of paper facing him so he can read it. And it said, parole date, April 4th, 2010. He thought it was an April Fool's joke. He'd been in that building so long that they were comfortable with each other and he thought somebody's playing an April Fool's joke with him and he started laughing and the guy said, it's not a joke, you're going home. Now, when these guys go to, when these guys go to the board and the board finds them suitable for parole, it's not over there, right? It still has to go to the governor. And, uh, and the governor up until 2010 really and there's been a few I heard found out in 2008 stuff like that but up till 2010 he realized that it's costing 50,000 a year to house these guys that are never going to commit another crime and uh, so he didn't know what to think three days later he's in Sacramento California he's from San Gabriel Valley that's Southern California um, I didn't know what to do. I mean, I'm, I'm used to dudes coming out doing three, four years, two years, 16 months violation. No problem. I know what to do. I did that, right? This dude comes out and does 29 years, eight months. I don't know what to fucking tell him. Uh, I honestly thought it was a fluke. No. So I get to talking to the guy and uh, and uh, I never seen a man with more gratitude in his life. And uh, it all changed for me that day. You know, I love doing what I did, but now I've seen one of these guys get out. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew who we wanted to help. I knew who we wanted to target in Sacramento. And. Uh, and we did. About two weeks later, I got a call from a parole agent in uh, Fresno or, or somewhere like that. And uh, he said, hey, I got one of your lifers that you wrote this letter for, blah, 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 that uh, I brought him to his residence down here and they say he can't stay there. Is that letter still good? I said, absolutely. So it is a... Uh, it's an act of Congress to get somebody transferred like that. Like, you know, you need to understand, 90% of these guys on a on a, on a uh, life sentence are murder cases. And uh, he said, this guy's been down 31 years. I put him in a motel room, and I'm gonna try to get the paperwork to get him pushed up to you guys. And I say, okay. Takes him about a week, but he shows up with him. Uh, and I'm waiting on him, and as soon as he walks in, see the first guy, he didn't look, he didn't look like a convict, let's just say. I mean, he looked, I mean, he was, he had that look of somebody that had been down that long in his eyes and just hit the streets, but he didn't look like your stereotypical convict. Well, this next guy did. And, uh, and I could tell that he had been places and done stuff inside prison. And, and so uh, I pulled him aside and had a one-on-one -on -one talk with him. And uh, one of the coolest dudes I ever met, man. You know, 31 years he'd been down. I think 19, what do you say, 1978, he caught a gang-related murder case, you know. He was a kid, you know, kid, and uh, came out an old man. I uh, I got 
I got to tell you, though, I haven't had to do much over there because the way it works is you've got one lifer there that's been out two and a half years. You've got one lifer there that's been out a year. You've got one lifer this bear that's been out six months. You've got one lifer there that's been out two months. You've got one lifer that just got there. The one that just got there is benefiting from everything. It's, it's, it's a smooth transition. He knows what he has to do because of this guy did it. He knows what he has to do because that guy did it. He knows what he has to do because that guy did it. That's how it works. Pretty simple, right? So 15 out of 15 since April 2010, all still out of prison. I did, uh, I did the math on it. Before it was 15, I, I you know I got down to the calculator, 50,000 a year to uh, house a per, you know an inmate times whatever. I was over $500,000 saved on the state. So like I said, out of 15 parolees, lifers, almost all of them convicted of murder. Some of them did up to 35 years. Some of them did 35. One of them did 35 years, 32, 31. A bunch of 23s and 25s, a couple 17s, and out of 15 dudes, only two of them ever has been back to prison within the first year. And both of those guys got back out, got a wake up call, 90 days, and are shining. A bunch of them have moved on and got their own places, uh, you know, living the, living the American dream. And, and I'm going to tell you the reason why I'm sitting right here in front of this race car is what I show these guys. See, I grew up my whole life, me and my brother, all we wanted to do was race sprint cars. This is what we dreamed about doing. This is what I used to lay in bed at night, pretend I was at Calistoga. You know, this is all we ever wanted to do. And then I stuck a needle in my arm and that all went out the window, right? So once we got clean and got our lives together, we decided we were going to go race. And I was a little too fat and he wasn't. And uh, we made it happen. That's why I'm sitting in front of this race car because that's what we do. We live the dream, right? And I show these guys, if we can do this, you can do it. Hard and long for your That's money. Fact. Matter of fact, outside broke your run money. Still I get a pause for the balls that I toss. It'll cause these scars across my tongue, money. It's unbelievable the way that I do it. I'm undefeatable, the beatable, readable, the repeatable. I'm greedy on a beat with the speed of evil can evil.